So a user was asking me about how you would use a library of materials, meshes, groups, whatever, to your advantage when I said that I keep a library of um, things that I reuse so that I can basically kit bash. It's kit bashing essentially. So anyways, welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed or learned something from the video, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more Blender, Unity, Unreal real coding and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So here I have an empty dot blend file. Uh, I'm going to delete the cube. So basically the whole idea behind this is it just saves you time overall. Let's say I had created a couch. So let's pretend so let's say I had a couch, something like this. Maybe I'll add a subsurf just because it's pretty boxy, just because I'm saving time. Oh, that's really not going to help me without too much work. But anyways, let's say I had built a couch and I wanted to add a material to it. So what I can do is go into a library of pre-made materials I have. So right now it has uh, no material on it. So what I would do is I would go file, append. Now the difference between linking and appending, appending actually brings in the data into the dot, your, your, into your dot blend file. Um, linking just, um, basically reads the data from another dot blend file which i believe saves you some memory so use it when you can but it um it has drawbacks i'm not going to get into them right now i want to make this a fairly quick video so anyways we're going to append a material so i just made a couple just to play with for today so uh in my assets folder personal under material setups i have a procedural brick wall and procedural leopard print i just made them up really quickly for this video so i'm going to add procedural leopard print by clicking on it now under the material folder there is the material i didn't name i forgot to name it but there's the material that i made in there so i'm gonna double click on it to import it now i have a material in my in my file that got imported material 001 in this case so i can select it and if we go into the node editor you can see that it's brought my entire material in just like that and so if I go into rendered mode, if we're lucky, yeah, I get my uh, kind of CGO uh, leopard print there. So that's that's how that wor works, basically. So it saves you time. So let's say I didn't have a coach. Let's say I made a, let's say I had a brick wall on my scene or whatever. And again, I just quickly wanted to add a material to it. So... Again, I can do the exact same thing. All I gotta do is just go File, Append, which by the way, the hotkey is Shift F1, so I'm gonna use that because it's a good hotkey to remember, so Shift F1. I'm gonna go back and, okay, maybe I'm gonna use my brick wall procedural tech or uh, material. So I go under this one, Material, I have Procedural Brick Wall, so I import that, and it's now available to me as a material. So I choose it, go into Material Mode, rendered I guess well it doesn't work out so good in this one I'd have to play I'd have to add another node but I have the basics set up there for me I have the bump mapping the color the uh, the basic setup I just have to do some playing around with it to get looking exactly how I want but I have that set up and available to me to just boom put it right in there um but where this really comes useful is in my opinion kit bashing so let's say um like a ship that i've or sorry another one i wanted to mention yeah so um making bringing in things you've made before that are perfect or useful so for example um Let's say I need a sphere, but I don't want to use a UV sphere because I don't like the way it's set up in rings and segments. And I don't want to add a icosphere because I don't like the way it's set up with triangles. So what I do is I import or I append, I guess, 
go back, back, back. I have a folder called primitives. I'm going to import polysphere four levels. Now, you would assume you would go into something called mesh. And yes, my four meshes are in there. But in this instance, I've grouped them all. And this is what I suggest you do is group anything you can because that will bring it all in. And then you can choose that you want, delete the rest, and remove the group. So I've, I've got polysphere four levels dot group. So as you can see, it imports. Apparently, I only grouped the one. I forgot to group the rest. Okay, well, this is a good example either way. So I've imported this one polysphere, level four. So it's subdivided four times. And so I, I maybe I want to use this because it has um, quad topology for a sphere. But um, and then all I have to do is just remove the group after. Well, I guess I won't use this the dynamic space for under the object data. You just click the little X and it's no longer grouped. So I can also as you can see, that didn't work because I forgot to group the other three ones. So I can import just a base mesh. So I'll choose one, two, three, four, all four of them. Append from library. And where do they go? Apparently they didn't want to come in. Let's try that again. So apparently it doesn't want to append meshes that way. That's why I suggest grouping them. But you get the basic idea. Another one um, is... I can also just bring in a whole scene, by the way, too. So if I bring in that whole scene, it's now available to me as a second scene. So there's my four different levels of polyspheres. I've got low level, average level, high level, and super high level. So four different levels. But you can see under my outliner, I now have two scenes. So this is useful for doing some things in Blender, but if you want to get one, if you want to bring a whole scene and merge it into another, the easiest way I've found is simply just to, oh, how did I used to do this now? To, to select the objects you want to move into your other scene, and then you, um, Right, that's it. Okay, so all you got to do is just take your object from a second scene and drag its little object icon, the same one as the uh, object data uh, tab there, and you drop it over onto the scene. You can see when I hover over the other scene, drop objects to scene, and it'll move it in between your scenes. It actually makes a duplicate. There was another way I used to do it, but I guess that works in newer versions too. I don't know when that was added. So yeah, that's a way to move things between scenes. So now I can delete this scene, go back to my original scene, and I have my low and medium level um, polyspheres. And uh, lastly, it works on anything you can you can imagine. I just quickly made up a Bezier curve, perfectly scaled, which I called perfectly scaled Bezier curve. Again, I could try to import the Bezier curve, but I grouped it because I suggest grouping everything. Apparently the four levels of polyspheres got grouped into here too. Anyways, um, so the perfect scale Bezier curve. A pen from library, as you can see, I get my nice Bezier curve here. If I select it, you can see how it's two units across the uh, the handles, and it's perfectly straight in all axes. So that would be a good starting point for a Bezier curve. Or let's say I had a... Um, a curve that I wanted to save because it was some shape that I wanted to use over and over and over again. So that's that's how I do that. And to get rid of the green so I don't get to confuse, same deal. I just go into the uh, the object tab and I just remove it from a group and now it's a regular curve. So yeah, where I find this the most useful is let's say something like I, uh, the ship that I'm working on right now. So um. Kit bashing is where this is the most useful. So um, I have these little propeller shafts sticking out of it right now. Um, they've got the hull. This is all hand modeled. But let's say I wanted to quickly add in a propeller that maybe I had modeled from another ship, and I didn't want to model again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select this loop here if I can get in there. I'm going to go shift S, cursor to selected, that'll put my cursor there. I'm going to go file, append, I'm going to find, I have, what's a good one? Somewhere I should have one. So same deal since I didn't group that one, 
I'm just going to drag it into my, into my first scene, get rid of that one. I now have this propeller shaft that I can use, or I can tab into it and get rid of the propeller shaft that I don't need since I already have one. And then all I have to do is re reset the origin. So control shift C, origin to geometry, and then shift S, selection to cursor. So there we go. Just like that, I have a propeller set to set to my um, to my propeller shafts. Now I just join it to my object that has a mirror modifier. I have a mirror. Oh right, that's right. They're not mirrored. They're separate meshes. I think yeah it's a it's an unmirrored mesh because it would mirror weirdly anyway so yeah that that's the quick way to uh, to do something exactly like that so I now have that propeller added just like that and it's totally ready to animate I just got to um, I'd have to put these into separate objects I'll just delete this one for the sake of it um, and I would reset uh, origin to geometry and rotate around its local Y nope global Y local Y local X local Z local well it would need more work obviously you wouldn't have it rotating like that my origin is out a little bit but yeah it's ready to animate just like that so a propeller that I had from another model my u-boat model I quickly just kit bashed into my other ship model and so let let's say I wanted something else all I gotta do is just file append and choose choose something else that I have um, I don't really have a lot offhand that I really want to show off. However, Andrew Price, for example, does this all the time. He uh, he has if you if you buy like his Architecture Academy, for example, he's he's constantly having you append objects into the scene and then just arranging them how you want. So here's a bush from one of his latest. Um, one of his latest materials but he also for example has a couch for use in the first module of um, the architecture academy and you just depend it in your scene and set it up where you want it so that's just an example of um, how I would suggest you build up a library when you like something when you've made something you like group it and then save it as a separate dot blend in an organized folder structure so have one as primitive shapes have one as curves have one as materials have one as textures because you can you can import images from a file too you'll see if i uh if i go append and if i find sub i can actually probably take it just from this image so yeah there's the fabric bump map and there's the leather um mit or uh, texture diffuse texture so you can get images from a dot blend too. Now I have to add if there's something that's external such as a texture um, if it's if it's not made within blender if you've had to import it like like a texture you have to go to external data and automatically pack into dot blend otherwise it's not going to save that data and it won't be available to you later i have this checked off automatically no matter what it leads to slightly bigger dot blends but it means that i never lose a texture or anything to that degree so yeah that's really about it for for that i i promised this video a day or two ago and i totally forgot about it i'm sorry to that user so anyways thanks for watching from the team here at blendertech.com if you enjoyed this video and learned something consider liking it and consider subscribing for more videos we're now on twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech and facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page all one word if you dislike this video for some reason instead of leaving with a thumbs down Please tell us what you dislike so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests and call for help, so if there's something you want to see or you need help with something, then just let us know. Or we offer live help via Skype, username BlenderTech, send an instant message. We'll see you next time, and remember our motto, create your way.